Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Building Custom Wake Words and Voice Control, presented by Sensory and DSP Group. My name is Joe Murphy, and I'll be the moderator today. I am the Vice President of Marketing at Sensory and also the founder of Vocalize AI. And I'd like to welcome everyone and now introduce our panelists. So if everybody could just give a brief personal intro, starting with Jeff. Hey, good morning, all. It's great to be here with our friends at DSP Group this morning. I'm Jeff Rogers, Vice President of Sales, co-founder of Sensory. Uh, excited to uh, share with everyone uh, our voice hub and what we're doing with DSPG. And Duty. Hi, good morning. I'm Duty Jacobs from uh, DSP Group. I'm a product manager. And I'm working many years with Jeff, with uh, Sensory for many projects, and I'm very excited to be here today. So enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Judy. And Raj Deep. Uh, good. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Joe. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, indeed, today is a very exciting day for all of us, and I'll be, I'm very happy to part of this webinar. Today, I'm going to demonstrate Wake Up Words and a command on our DSP group chipset with the help of Sensory Customized Wake Up Word and Command. Myself, Raj Deep, I have been with DSP group for the last seven years. Currently, I'm working as a senior technical manager in Bangalore site. I look after the R&D division here in Smart Voice. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Rajdeep. Before we jump into it, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, this webinar is scheduled for 45 minutes with a 15 minute Q&A session at the end. Uh, there is a Q&A window that every participant can access and enter questions. We will try to address those questions at the end. Any questions that don't get addressed will follow up in email. Uh, finally, this webinar is being recorded. Anyone who registered will get a link to the recording. And now we're going to jump in with a couple of uh, overviews of Sensory and DSPG, starting with Jeff. Great. Let me uh, put up a presentation here, just uh, go through a couple of uh, quick intro slides to Sensory. So for those who don't know Sensory, I, I'm guessing most on, the, uh, on this webinar do know Sensory. We've been around for more than 25 years. Um, we, we started the company back in 94 with the sole goal and desire to make it easier for people to communicate with products and um, we, we looked at the senses and we said well let's start with let's start with speech and uh, turns out to be one of the most challenging ones but uh, we've definitely conquered it over the years so again our focus is really improving the interface that people have with their products um, we create both embedded voice and vision ai models using state-of-the-art machine learning uh, approaches our technologies have shipped in billions of products today. Um, I've thrown up just a couple of uh, uh, customer logos. These are all real customers that have done real products with sensory in, in high quantities. And so we, we play across many different um, markets from mobile to IOT, to wearable, to automotive, to appliance, uh, to finance, uh, to um, health and medical as well. So a lot of different um, areas where our technologies, both our voice and vision technologies are, are, are used. Um, so introducing our, our truly hands-free, we're going to focus on this uh, technology today in the webinar. Um, and what I'm going to show you all runs on, on DSPG chips as well. So it's a, our truly hands-free is, is it's accurate, it's widely deployed, it's, it's wake word, it's multi-wake word, it's multilingual, and it's um, uh, phrase spotted um, recognition such that even in high noise environments, we can, we can recognize a wake word, we can recognize these phrases. So um, we're really big on custom wake words. So we do support and we are the front end to a lot of the big uh, cloud giants such as Amazon and Siri and, and um, Cortana and Google in the past, uh, Naver and Line and Baidu and Tencent. Um, but we also um, really have a focus on custom wake words where we want to protect companies' brands and their names and their uh, really their, their image as opposed to um, you know, just using the cloud. Um, phrase spotted commands, again, work in, in noise environments because we, we, spot the, we spot those phrases. I'll show you demonstrations of all this later in the, in the webinar. Um, we support more than 24 languages today. And again, uh, our focus is working in high noise and environments. Um, you know, we, we can't just do things in a, in a lab test as an example. Um, so all of the following are part of what we run on DSPG today. So fixed wake word, it works right out of the box. There's no enrollment, there's no training. I just say the wake word and it works. Enroll fixed wake word is where we start with a fixed wake word 
Then you allow the user to enroll such that it now learns their voice, their accent. And um, it's still based on a fixed wake word. Um, so you get the marketing and the brand that you want out of that. But again, it, it, it adapts to the user's voice. We also support a user defined wake word. This is where the user can define their own wake word. Uh, so this is language independent. I can ship a product anywhere in the world. The user does a quick enrollment. They say the thing, their, their wake word four times and now it knows their wake word and of course their voice, their accent. And then speaker verification. This runs uh, can run with our enrolled fixed wake word and our user defined wake word. It provides um, a speaker ID and a true voice password. So that it's, it, it really is a speaker verification. So it's more than just me saying the word, it's me saying the word, and then it's all sorts of different um, you know, frequencies in my voice and other things that we're taking out of that. All of these technologies <clears throat> run on DSPG today. Um, we're not gonna go into it today in, in the webinar, but I wanted to mention also our, our truly natural engine. This is our large vocabulary recognizer. It's high performance, private by design, um, and it's, it's, it's designed to run completely offline without, without a cloud assistant. In fact, there's a, a microwave oven that's just hitting the market within the last month by Faberware that uses our truly natural engine. And basically, I buy the microwave, I bring it home, put it on the counter, plug it in, and I start talking to it. There's no connecting to my Wi-Fi, there's no apps, there's no skills, there's none of that hassle that I have to do. I just, I just plug it in and start using it. It's got a huge vocabulary and, and, and it's designed around microwave ovens. So I can say things like cook for 35 seconds or, uh, you know, defrost my frozen pizza or, or, you know, cook a two pound chicken or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> again, it's all, all running on device. So this is an example of our truly natural engine. Um, our truly secure is our face and voice biometric solution. So uh, we can do both computer vision where I can look at the person's face and say, yeah, that's Jeff Rogers face. And so I, I, can, I can be verified that way or with voice. And we've got products in the market that use both of these. So we work with several banks around the world that are using our face biometric, including large ones like uh, Mizuho and, and Benorte in, in Japan and Mexico. And then a, a myriad of banks around South America as well. And then also our, 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 um, our speaker verification or the voice side of it is being used in both mobile phones as well as PCs. So as an example, NEC in Japan uses our, our truly secure speaker verification to not only recognize that the, the user said the wake word, but also that it's me saying it and therefore I can, I can unlock and open the PC. These are also designed to work in, in real world environments. So both high noise as well as normal kind of lighting environments. So today, we're going to introduce our voice hub uh, with a focus on truly hands-free. Um, we'll create a couple of uh, custom wake words so we can kind of show dual wake words running at the same time. We'll create a, a phrase spotted command set. Uh, and then uh, DSPG is going to demonstrate this uh, working in noise, of course. And all of this is running on DSPG, uh, DSPG chips with, uh, with sensory uh, as the software. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Judy, do you want to take over and tell us a little bit about DSP Group? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. So, good morning again. So, a few words about DSP Group. So, DSP Group was established 35 years ago, 1986. All these years, all about voice processing, uh, low power SOCs, together with sensor, you have 60 years of experience of this uh, area. Uh, this PG ships shipped already three point, more than 3.5 3 billion chipset. 100 million of that are related for the family of chipset that I will uh, describe today regarding uh, voice control. And it's in more than 100 different products already in the market. So um, our family is now number one of position for low power voice user interface solutions. We have more than uh, 200 patents. So when we looked in the market, there are many segments that voice control is relevant. We choose for today webinar four segments that we think that they um, fit this uh, requirements of the voice control. So we start from left to right. So the first one is the entertainment. Uh, we can, uh, for that, we can, uh, talk about remote controls for TV, for other devices, TV itself, smart speaker, and more. In this case, in many uh, of these devices, uh, the, the, the 
the ODM that is, or the company that doing this uh, product need to have some custom workload. This is where the solution with sensor is come, come to the device. I will give an example a few weeks ago, Roku, a TV vendor from, uh, from US, uh, launched a remote control for TV with the keyword of Hey Roku. In this case, it cannot be Alexa or Google, like other devices that are uh, need to use these devices, but need a custom wake word. After the wake word, the user will say something like, I want to play a movie, I want to play what they see, continue what they see last week, etc., etc." And this should go to the cloud. So the first uh, segment of first type of solution that for this segment is a custom wake word with a query that is going to the cloud. Another segment is smart home. In case of smart home, you want to control your home devices like turn on the light, close the door, open the window, etc. In this case, many of the commands can be done locally. No need to go to the cloud. In this case, the solution that we will show in this webinar with Sensory is that we will have a custom workload for the uh, company that is doing that. And after that, local commands. The third segment is like cameras. It can be a personal camera, it can be security camera, PC camera. In many cases, you cannot handle these devices by touching them by a button. You, you want to con control it by your voice because you are bicycling or running or things like that. This is also where, where we will need the local commands. And the last one are hearable and wearable. When let's think that we, you are running and you have some uh, earbud, uh, TWS earbud, and you want to control it while you are running and you don't want to touch your smartphone because you are running. So for example, you want to say volume up, volume down, next song, et cetera, et cetera. For that, we, we looked what the end user expectation for these devices and what, the, what are the supported function in order to achieve this expectation. The first one, the user don't want, the user want that the voice detection will be accurate and reliable. The user don't want that he will say the keyword, let's say hi Roku, and then again, hi Roku, hi Roku, but it is not detected. So for that, the device, most of the devices will need some pre-process algorithm. The pre-process algorithm, including noise reduction, beamforming, acoustic echo, echo cancellation, in some cases, wind noise reduction, and many others. The second the expectation from the user is to have a privacy. The user don't want that everything that is coming from the microphone will go to the cloud, not at home and not, also not external uh, outside. So for that, as I said, in this kind of solution, we will have the, the, vo the voice trigger will be locally in the device. And only after that, in some cases, the query will go to the cloud and only the query. In other cases, also the local commands will be in the device on the edge at home and nothing is going to the cloud. So it will help with the privacy. The next uh, expectation from the user is to have usability. The user don't want, for example, in the remote control of Roku, to change the battery every two weeks or one month. So the power consumption in some of the devices that they showed before is extremely important. Another point, let's say the earbud that I talked before, it's very small. So also the solution should be small, should not be large. This is part of the usability. And of course, the last point that any user want, low cost. Or have to, to have low cost, of course, the chipset should be in reasonable price, but also uh, need to have the to enable the um, the chip provider need to help the ODM to have fast time to market, to have a, a solution that is ready to have a good support. To achieve this expectation, uh, DSPG has a family of chipset, more than ten chipset in this family, and uh, but all of them has similar architecture. So the chipset get one or two or three or up to eight microphone to the chipset can be connected. I put here three microphones because this is the demo that we will show today. And then there is pre-process algorithm. This pre-process can come from DSPG. We have the full set for that. And it can come also from third party. So we are open also for that option. The signal after the pre-process should be clean. And then it will go to the sensory wake world. And this is the first point that I said, it should be accurate and reliable. So sensory will get the clean signal from the microphone after the pre-process and can detect the wake world. Sensory can detect one or two or even more wake words in parallel. But parallel to sensory, our solution can run other wake word engines like Amazon and or Google in parallel to sensory. For example, we had the project in the past that it has connected to the cloud with Amazon. So the user can say, Amazon, what is the weather? But in parallel, there is a sensory uh, local command solution that the user can say, volume up, volume down, next song, etc. 
Except the voice control that we discussed till now, there are other parallel activities that our solution can do, like voice call and sound event detection. Voice call, we, we well understand what does it mean, but it can run in parallel to the voice control. It means that you can have a voice call, the user can have a voice call, and in parallel, the voice control is running. So if the user will say volume up or hang up, it will do what is needed for the voice call. Another thing that can run in parallel is sound event detection. Let's say that we are in a security system, and then we want to detect if there is a glass break or dog barking or a siren or things like that. All of that can run in low power in our chip in parallel to sensory technology. I took one example of this family of chipset. It's called DBM10. It was launched last year. And this is a good example to do part of, uh, to, to do this, uh, to achieve this uh, market. So this is a dual core chip. It has a DSP. It has also a full neural network engine. It's not just accelerometer, accelerator. It is a full engine that can run neural networks. The point is to have a low power. As we said, in some cases, remote control, earbuds, hairbell, et cetera, et cetera. Power consumption is very important. So we have here the engines for the neural network. Above that, we have here sufficient MIPS and memory to run other algorithms as described before. And we have all the required interfaces from microphones, analog and digital, and all the control interfaces to the host. So today, as Jeff said, we'll show two demos. The first one will be uh, to simulate a situation of remote control. So uh, like remote control for set box, for TV, for IoT, or security system. In this case, we have one or two wake words. And then after that, the query will be sent to the cloud. In our demo, what we'll do, we'll capture the query and then um, we will not show also that it's going to the cloud. It's outside of this webinar scope. We will use our chip DBM10 that I showed before, evaluation board, connected to three digital microphone with the sensory wave engine running on that. The second demo that we will show is a, a custom wake word and local commands. This is for target applications like smart switch, smart key, smart thermostat, and more. We will use the same platform. And, but in this case, we will detect the wake word. And after that, we'll detect also the commands. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. Jeff, can you show us how people can create custom wake words in Sensory's Voice Hub? Absolutely. Um, let me uh, just share my screen here. So, <clears throat> so this is our, our Voice Hub. And uh, Joe, just, just confirming you can see my screen? Yes, looks good, Jeff. OK, great. Thanks. Um, this has been a total, <clears throat> a total game changer for, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> for sensory and, and for the speech market in general. Um, traditionally, adding speech to products was very challenging. It, it required data. It required tuning. It, it required a lot of kind of back and forth and, <clears throat> and uh, learning more about the product and the audio front ends. And, and some of that's still required today, of course. But our goal with Voice Hub was to create a new tool to allow developers and companies very easily and quickly to add voice to products. And uh, we've had the ability to do this for a number of years, but it wasn't until recently after we developed some new tech that included a, a proprietary um, synthetic data approach and other, um, other techniques where we actually came up with the Voice Hub that, that uh, provides excellent accuracy. And so we've got hundreds and hundreds of companies now that are using Voice Hub to create both prototypes and proof of concepts as well as products. We've got a few customers that are going to, to market this year with uh, Voice Hub output. And so what Voice Hub is, is basically the ability to, uh, again, create, uh, add voice to products very easily. So I've opened up a, a new project here. I can create a custom wake word, single or multiple wake words. In this, uh, in this window here, I can create up to 10 wake words running at the same time. Um, or I've got, and this is part of Truly Hands Free. Also part of Truly Hands Free is our simple commands. This is a small set of, spot of, of spotted commands, again, with that phrase spotting that allows me to say things before and after and still have it spot the word that I want. So it has an NLU feel to it, where it's, uh, but it's still a basic uh, phrase spotted command set. And in this, uh, in Voice Hub, I can create sets with one to 20 words. And again, in a, in a product or application, I could have as, as many different sets as I wanted to have. So if I say settings menu, as an example, that could open up a whole nother set for settings. And so I can branch those down as, as far as I want to. And then uh, we've also added our truly natural. This is our, our natural language, large vocabulary recognizer where we can allow companies to define their own grammars 
And these can be very simple from just uh, a few hundred commands to hundreds of thousands or millions of commands. Um, today, I'm going to focus on, on the truly hands-free part of this uh, as it all um, uh, uh, applies directly to what we're doing with DSPG. So to start with, I've got a new project here. And um, I can here I can, I can name the project whatever I want. So I can call this the um, sensory DSP. ESPG webinar. Um, and so I can, I can name it whatever I want to. Then I can select the language that I want. And so within Voice Hub, there are many languages already supported. So you can see that all of these languages are supported. So if I want to do something in German, I can select that. Or if I want to do something in Mandarin, I can select that. And the tool is designed to work with, with the language, the, the, the specific language character. So if I'm, if I'm using Korean or Japanese or Mandarin as an example, I'll be using um, those characters that are uh, that represent that language as opposed to trying to Romanize everything. Uh, and the same goes with the other languages, um, whether it's it's Russian or or uh, you know Portuguese, uh, Brazilian Portuguese or Portugal Portuguese. <clears throat> and then you can see that um, you know with Eng <clears throat> excuse me with English alone uh, today in Voice Hub we support both U.S. English and U.K. English. We're, at, we're constantly adding languages. As I mentioned earlier, we support 24 languages today. And so uh, from an English standpoint, we support US English, UK English, both part of Voice Hub today. We'll be adding our Australian English engine as well as our Indian English engine. And these are different languages to, to sensory, obviously. So uh, for today's demo, I'll just stick with US English. Then I can select the size that I want. So depending on what platform I'm running on uh, and how much memory is available for the wake word, I can select the appropriate size. So today it, it supports 80K bytes, as small as 80K bytes and up to about a megabyte. We're developing the feature right now to allow us to create even smaller uh, models in Voice Hub and, and that should be available here in the, in the next several weeks. Um, so for this, for this demonstration, I'll use a small 80K byte model then you can see that I can select the output format. So this is where we basically pick the, the format that we want. The default is the sensory SDK, but in this case, um, I, wanted, I want to format it for the DSPG chip. And you can see here that I've selected the D2, 4, 5, 8, and 10. Um, we also support the D7 as well under another, uh, under another format. But basically anything that I create in this tool today will automatically be formatted to run on the DSPG chip. And in case, in, in the fact, uh, sorry, in the case with DSPG, we both support um, both unpacked and packed. Unpacked means that uh, it will be a little bit uh, larger, um, but it'll take less MIPS, or packed means it's going to be even smaller, but take a, a few more MIPS to run. So it depends on the application and, and the use case. You can see here that we also have the number of operating points. So the default is a single point, and, uh, but I can also select all points. So what does this mean? So it means that um, when we create a wake word, there's always a balance between a false accept and a false reject. We wanna make sure that when I say the wake word, it responds, but just in normal conversation, it doesn't say anything, it doesn't respond. And so that's again, a false, false accept and a false reject. So what operating points do is with a single point, the tool is going to identify its pick on the best balance between a false accept and a false reject. And it's gonna provide that single point. However, as a developer, I might want access to all the points and it takes a little bit longer to develop that, but then I'll have uh, typically between 15 and 20 different points uh, between no false accepts and no false rejects. And so obviously if I have no false accepts, my false reject will be higher. And if I have no false rejects, my false accept will be higher. And so again, all those points, the developer can, can choose those. It usually takes about an hour to create a custom wake word um, and if I'm doing all points, it, it might take a little bit longer than that. So the next part of this is that where I, I basically just type in the, the wake word that I want. So I'll type in, hey, sensory is the first one. And then I just hit, hit enter, or I can go over here and hit the plus sign. And that says, okay, I know that one. And then I also want, hey, DSPG. Now I put spaces between it just to make sure that the tool understand, understood that I wanted to say DSPG and not DSPGA, I guess. Um, actually, I've tried it both ways with DSPG and, and the, the, the technology is smart enough to understand the difference between those. But if I type in a word like wind, um, that, could, that could be recognized as wind or wind. And so what we've done over here, you see these little speaker icons. 
This, um, and if I turn my volume up, hopefully, hopefully you can hear this. Um, this will pronounce what, it, what the recognizer is expecting to hear. So in the case of sensory. Hey, sensory. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. And let me make sure on DSPG. Hey, DSPG. Okay, no problem. And with this one. Wind, blend. So it actually pronounced it both ways. So the recognizer is smart enough to know that in that case, it could be, I, the, the, the command could be wind or the, or the command could be wind. And so again, having all this built into the tool makes it really easy for developers to ensure that what they're building is kind of, you know, what they would expect. So if I, if I, you know, as an example, if I want to do channels and I type in HBO just like that and play it, uh, uh, it's thinking I'm saying hubbo. And so I would say, oh, that's not what I want. So I put the spaces, then try it. HBO. Okay. Yeah. That's what I want. So Again, we've, we've built a lot in here to, to really uh, enable the developer to do things quickly. I'll go ahead and get rid of those. So once I'm done with the wake words I want, and I, as I mentioned earlier, this supports up to 10 wake words. Um, I'll just do these two uh, for today. So once I'm done, I hit the build button. And it, like I said, it'll take about an hour, a little, a little bit more because I've got two wake words here to build. Now, the other, the other, we still have our traditional approach to building wake words, and that's a hand-tuned model where we actually go out and we, we gather data of a few hundred people saying the, the wake word. Then our linguists who are skilled in linguistics go through and hand-tune down to the phoneme level that wake word. And that process takes about three weeks and obviously has some NRE associated with it. And so in some cases, developers start with the voice hub tool because, well, it's fast, easy, and free. And then, and then, you know, once it's going to market, if they decide, particularly if it's um, distance recognition uh, or high noise environment, uh, maybe the, the voice hub uh, performance is not what they need, then they can go to a hand-tuned model. But this allows them to go through that and, and kind of define and, and make sure that the product flow is what they want before they get there. Um, for close talking types of applications, uh, Voice Hub is excellent. The, the performance is, is outstanding. And so for those that have not seen or had access to our Voice Hub as yet, uh, be sure to, to, to get access to it. And uh, I, I'll be, I'd be really disappointed if you weren't amazed. Um, okay, so I can hit the build button. And since we don't have an hour to wait for that, I've got the exact same project here already built. And so then I can, I, there's a couple of different options, but one is I can, I can test it. So I can come down here I can hit the audio record and now with, with the Zoom call going on, I'm not sure this will work, but let me try it. Hey, DSPG. And yeah, so because I'm using Zoom, it's, it's not gonna do that, but you'll, you'd, you'd see the response down here. Um, so the other way to test it is that I can just download the, download the model. So I can, there's two options here. I can download the application. So we've created an application for Android and iOS. And so that way you can, you can test something out on your phone immediately. Um, and then with the DSPG tools and what Rajdeep is gonna show us in a minute is how to take this model and actually run it on the, on the DSPG hardware. So instead of downloading the application, I can download the model. So I click here that I agree to the terms. And then there's, there's two options. One is I can download the model. If I click this, it's gonna open up a window. And it's gonna say, okay, here's the, here's the dual wake word and uh, it'll, it'll download this file right here. And you can see the total size is 169K byte. And, and that, that's including both of those wake words in there. Um, or with my, with my mobile phone, I can, uh, I can uh, just do a quick test right here. So let me pull up my phone. Here's my phone. And I've got the application here. And so I say, scan the QR code. So I'll scan that code. And now it loads it into my phone. And so I can get rid of this, put my phone back up here. So now you can see I've got the two wake words here. I've got my phone and I'm just screen sharing my phone. So I can say, hey, sensory. And it says, yeah, I recognize that. Or I can say, hey, DSPG. And it will say, yeah, I got that one as well. And so this is, this is true, you know, always on, always listening wake words. I don't want it to falsifier if I'm just talking like this. But when I say, hey, sensory, even when I say it in the middle of a sentence like that, I want it to, to, to spot that. Or if I say, hey, DSPG, this is a great webinar. Again, I wanted to spot it like that. So with all these tools, it makes it very easy now for the first time for developers and companies to create custom wake words, test immediately, and then load it onto the hardware that they want. So let me turn it over to Rajdeep, who will show us the, the DSPG side of this.
you're muted, Rajdeep. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. So thank you, Jeff. So uh, first demo, what we're going to show is uh, Dwellback Award, which is being just now generated from the Voice Hub. Before I go into the, the first demo, I'd like to show you the demo setup for you. So for that purpose, I'm going to change my camera to the secondary camera, which will be pointing at the demo setup. So now you can see there is a DBMD tunnel evaluation board in front of you. And I'm not going to explain about the DBMD tunnel chip, which is already been explain, explained by Dudi in his slide. Uh, you can also see that there's a triangular mic in front of it, which has been connected to the DBM tunnel chip. And also on your right hand side, there's a small speaker is there. That speaker will be used to introduce some kind of a noise, or I can say some kind of music in the background to demonstrate some of our noise reduction use cases. So now, uh, whatever has been shared by Jeff, let's see what we have is that uh, currently, we, if I enter the, uh, the tarball, I can see there are a few files, those files, uh, if I try to see there are two binaries are being generated here. So what I'm going to do is that uh, these two binaries, I'm combining it and I'm create a new binary called sensory dwell wake up bin. So this is the model file, which we call it echo, echo, acoustic model. This will be loaded into our uh, application. So let me turn towards the demo application. So let me share this screen. Okay. So, okay. so before I start my demo application, I'd like to tell you that uh, currently uh, the BMD tenor chip has uh, some firmware. The firmware has been compiled with all those necessary BSP driver, like uh, reading the data from the mic. Also, it has a sensory engine running, but it doesn't have any wake up what embedded into the firmware. So what are we going to do? We are going to first load the firmware, then whatever new acoustic model has been created just now, that will be loaded into the BMD tenor, which means that Customer can go to the Sensory Web Hub, Voice Hub, and then they can generate near custom record and it can, they can easily port into the, our chip and then they can test the customized record. So the, this demo application, which I'm going to show it, it is a like Python based, it has a UI, but you won't be able to see the UI, but the target audience is uh, tar, uh, product is like entertainment, like a, uh, like a remote control solution. So what, we are, what I'm going to do is that first, I'm going to say the wake up word followed by a query so, so the, this kind of solution can be used in a, like a remote control solution where the person can be sitting in front of the TV and with, using the remote, he will send some query to the cloud. But obviously there is no cloud connectivity for today's webinar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the, uh, the query here locally here. Also, uh, uh, when the application will start, uh, when, as soon as the wake up will be detected, what we'll try to do, the application will try to print whenever there's a detection happens. So currently there are two wake up board, one is Hey DSPG and one is Hey Sensory. So as soon as you'll get detected, it will be printed on your console. Also, if you look at in their small screen where actually currently I'm pointing at the demo setup, there are few LEDs on the motherboard. So what will happen that as soon as the Hey DSPG will be will detected, then what will happen, it will, it will uh, blue color LED will be on. And when the Hey Sensory will be detected, the green color LED will be on. So with that, uh, let me start the application now. So it is loading slowly. So first thing is that uh, what I need to do is that I need to load the farmer. So uh, I'm, I'm going to load the farmer now. And so the, now this is the farmer which has been loaded. And also the acoustic model, the new acoustic model, which is just now we created, which is here, which is now loaded uh, now, just now. Okay, so now let's start with the, the demo. So. Hey, DSPG, play movie Joker. So you see there's a five second um, duration for the query. So we expect that within five second duration, we, the person has to say the query word. And also after capturing the query, we are dumping it locally in this uh, demo application. So since it supports dual wake up board, let's try the second wake up board. Hey, Sensory, can you play music from Bon Jovi? So you can see the hay sensory also being detected. So you see second time also when I said it got detected. So it is very easily, it can be done. So now I'll move to the second stage of this demo. Uh, in this demo, I like to tell you that currently our in our DBMD tunnel chip, we have few different audio uh, algorithms are running. One of them is noise beam forming and another is noise reduction. So in noise reduction, what we're going to do is that uh, we are going to play some music on the background which will, which will introduce uh, some kind of a not clean audio, but uh, with our algorithm, we'll try to provide the clean audio back to the sensory engine. And we'll see how the detection is going to happen. To, to make the, uh, the feel of the 
uh, the BM detail mic. What I'm going to do is that currently I'm placed my headset mic, which currently I'm using to talk to in this webinar, exactly at the same place where the DBMD tunnel chip microphone is located. You can see on the small screen, I'm going to play, place it. Hey, ESPG, please play movie Joker. Hey, Sensory. Please play music from Bon Jovi. So you can see uh, we are playing the music in the ba in the background, and at the same time we uttered a wake up word, and it has been detected. And if you would have seen in the small screen, the blue color and the green color LED also would have been we also also blinking. Uh, uh, that's all from my side for the demo one. Thank all right, you. thank you, Rajdeep. Jeff, looking beyond custom wake words, can you show us how VoiceHub can create command sets? Absolutely. Um, so just uh, in uh, consideration of the time, I've just jumped ahead to uh, a set that I've already built rather than typing it in during the, <laughs> during the webinar. So again, I've, I've named the project. I've selected a wake word. So I already created a, a, a custom wake word, in this case, a DSPG wake word. I've selected the language as English. I've selected the size as 140K byte. Um, somebody asked earlier uh, in the questions, is this size, in, when, it came, when it comes to wake words, is, is it 80k bytes for each wake word? No, it was for, for, the, for the combination. And so I'm going to start with 147k byte and build the model. And as I add commands, that size is going to grow a little bit. It's not linear, but it, it does grow a little bit. So I, I think uh, hopefully that answers that question. It's the same with commands. So in this case, I, I can enter up to 20 different commands. I've just got these. So the idea is that if I want to do a, a um, just a smart thermostat that didn't have to connect to the cloud, it, uh, all I want to do is say things like I'm cold and it warms it up, or I'm too warm and it cools it down, or I want to just circulate the air. Or at night, I just say good night and it sets you know all the temperatures appropriately. Or good morning, it turns the heat on as an example. Or I'm leaving and it shuts everything off. So I just type these in and then uh, uh, built the model. Um, so now I can download this model just as I did before. And uh, then with my phone, I can scan the QR code. Okay. And then uh, that's loading into my phone now. Okay. So now it's, uh, you can see that it's the same demo <clears throat> from, from uh, on the PC now onto my phone. And so I can say things like, hey, DSPG, I'm cold. And it says, okay, yeah, I got the wake word. I got the command set. You'll notice that he didn't have to wait between. I didn't have to say the wake word and then hit pause and then say the, the command set. And the reason for that's simple. People don't do that. They don't want to do that. They want to speak normally and naturally to things. And so our technology matches that same expectation. And now because these are spotted commands, I can say things like, hey, DSPG, oh, you know, I'm too warm right now. And even though I said, um, I'm too warm right now, uh, it's still spotted the I'm, I'm, I'm too warm. And so again, building this into a system allows the user to speak in a normal way that they can, that they want to or expect to. Um, a lot of people see this demo and they're like, wow, this is, this again, this has got NLU to it. It's, it's just some huge, you know, huge vocabulary. No, this is actually a pretty simple command set, but with that phrase spotting capability, it allows us to speak naturally to it. Hey, DSPG, good night. And I, you know, instead of just saying good night and being all, um, you know, focused on, on the pronunciation and, and enunciation, I'm sure our, our linguists that are watching this right now are always, you know, cringing when I do these demos. But again, the point is, I want to be able to speak in a normal way to this and, and combining the wake word that I created with a command set. And all of this is done in VoiceHub. So again, it makes it very easy for companies to develop a product, add voice to it whether it's a thermostat like this one or a smart switch, or whether it's adding voice to gaming, if this is one of my new favorite hot topics is, it should be easy to add voice to gaming and, and supplement the button presses and the, and the mouse clicks and the keyboard um, uh, clicks with, with voice commands. This tool makes it very easy to do that today. Um, so now let me turn it back over to Rajdeep and he'll show you this same demo running on the um, BSPG hardware. Oh, thank you, Jeff. 
So for the second demo, what we are doing is like we are having a wake up word followed by a command. So all the wake up words being already been done by Jeff, and we will try to port those the new models back into our chip. So in this case, uh, there are actually two set of models we have to take care. Of. One is the first acoustic model for the wake up word, and second wake up model for the command. So before I start my demo application, I like to tell you that. In this demo application, um, there in the farmer, there is a same farmer. What we use in the first demo, the same farmer we are going to use it here. And every time when you well, say the utter the wake up word, there is a five second window. Within that five second window, you need to utter the, uh, the command. So as soon as the command is being detected, what will happen that the time, the window will again reset. So you have a, you have option to keep saying that a few more commands. If five seconds time is over, you need to utter the wake up words once again. So this can be treated for the application where there is no cloud connectivity and for thermostat kind of application. So let's uh, let, let me present the, the same demo application which I use for the first demo. Okay, uh, so like in the previous demo, what I was blinking some different LEDs on the small screen, but currently there is no that many LED to blink because there are so many set of commands. So I'm not going to blink, uh, only the blue color LED will be blink on the evolution board. So let me start the application now. Yeah, so the, the demo application is coming up. Okay, so let me select. There's a UI, small UI, but it is not being shown here. But yeah, let this uh, farmer load happen. So the farmer loading is done. Now we have uh, the new two uh, model. You can say first model is this one, which is for the wake up word. And the next model is this is wake up command, all being generated from the sensory web hub, voice hub. So now, um, the, like previously, whatever we have seen that whenever the wake up word is being detected, the console, in the console, we can see it has been printed. The same thing also happened in this case. So let me start uh, doing the demo one by one. Just a second. Hey, DSPG, I'm leaving. Hey, DSPG, good morning. You see the wake up words are being detected as well as the, the command also followed by the command. So that is being printed on the console, you can see it. Now I'll move to the second stage of demo. In the second step demo, I would like to introduce some kind of a noise uh, and the background noise the way I have done it in the previous demo and see how the wake up words and command being detected. So now also I'm going to place my same hat, my headset mic near to the speaker, near to the microphone of the DBMD tunnel chip so that uh, you will also see the same effect. So let me put the mic there. Hey, DSPG, good morning, good night. Hey, DSPG, I'm leaving. So you see uh, there's a background music being played, but at the same time, our noise reduction algorithm is working and it could able to provide us clean speech to the sensory engine. That is why the wake up words as well as commands are being detected. With this, I'm concluding my second demo. Thank you. Okay, great. That concludes our presentation. We'll now open up the Q&A session. I'll invite all the panelists to uh, share their video. And uh, jumping into some questions here, uh, I think this one is for DSPG. What type of microphones are supported by DSP Group? So I can take that. Um, so as I said also in the presentation, we have different chipset. Each chipset has a different uh, microphone, but in general, uh, our chipset can support digital and analog microphones. So some of our chipset can support even up to uh, eight microphone digital and the two analog uh, microphones. It's important for some of the segments that they showed before, like earbuds and other places that the analog microphones are very popular. We also support the Vesper microphone, whoever know that, that in that cases we can, our chip can be in hibernation mode to save power and the Vesper microphone can be uh, aside. Uh, specifically in the DBMD 10 that uh, in, in this demo, uh, we support four digital microphone and two analog, uh, two analog microphones. Um, Okay, great. I'm having a little bit of uh, 
internet connection stability issue here. So if everybody can hear me. Uh, Jeff, I think this one's for you. In the demonstration you gave of wind versus wind, how can somebody uh, choose one versus the other? Well, so I, I, it really depends on the use case. Um, if if the command is wind the clock, you would just type it in as wind the clock and the recognizer is smart enough to know that the, the user might say that is wind the clock or wind the clock. It doesn't really matter because what you want is wind the clock, obviously. But if, if, the, if the recognizer was supposed to recognize the word wind, that's okay because it will recognize that one as well. So I was just using that as an example of the, the tool is smart enough to know that there's two pronunciations to, to those four letters in that sequence. Got it. And while I have you, Jeff, can sensory models run with Windows OS? Yeah, yeah. So we support Linux, Android, Windows, um, uh, uh, Android, let's see, Android, Linux, Windows, PC, uh, Linux. Um, we do RTOS as well. Um, in, the, in the case of DSPG, there is no OS, so um, it, it, we can do that as well. Okay, great. Uh, this one is headed to you, Duty. How loud can the background noise be for successful detection of command with background noise? Okay, so again, this is a tricky question. It depends on the on the exact use cases. As I said, we have the pre-process algorithm. Uh, let's say smart speakers. So we are have the same algorithm. We can uh, pass ADS uh, if we take we can take it as a benchmark um, and. You know, we have 100 products, so depending on the product, GoPro, it's outside wind noise detection. So the, I think that the, whoever asked that can come, us to, can come to us and talk, and then let's define the exact use cases. But we have all the relevant the algorithm, the noise reduction, the beamforming, the acoustic cancellation, wind noise reduction, whatever is needed. Thank you, Duty. And I think I have another question for you. Can the five second query duration be increased? Yes, this is configurable. This is just an application that Rajib did. We can do whatever is needed. Uh, you know, it's just, um, it's our definition just for the demo, whatever is needed. I just explained, as Rajib said before, we have a, one acoustic model from the tool of the uh, trigger and another acoustic model of the commands. And then we decide what to look for the trigger or the commands. So it can be this or that. So it's up. To, it's an application issue, no problem. Whatever is needed. Yeah, actually, actually fur further to that question, Joe, um, we we can also set the wake word to be listening. So you you could set a timer of five seconds as an example. That when the wake word is said, it says, "Okay, I heard the wake word. Now I'm going to listen to those commands." And for five seconds, if I could, I'll, I'll keep listening for additional commands. So in, in the demo that I did, I could say wake word, um, you know, I'm leaving or wake word, good morning. And then I could say, I'm too warm, I'm too cold. I don't have to say wake word, I'm too warm. Wake word, I'm too cold, wake word. And so again, that's all, all defined in the software, but we have some, some customers that design it such that after the wake word is said, those commands are listening for a short period of time, three or five seconds as an example. And during that time, I can keep saying wake word, I keep saying command after command after command without having to go back to the wake word. Thanks Jeff for that additional info. Uh, another question for you, how can we integrate model from voice hub in custom Android and iOS? Do we need an SDK provided by sensory maybe? Yeah, so our SDK, our, our standard SDK support Linux, Android, iOS, Windows PC as an example. And so with the Voice Hub, you would select the, the, um, the, the, the um, download format would just be the, the, sen the, the standard sensory SDK. And then with that, you would have support of those different, uh, those different OSs, no problem. Okay, and then uh, a follow-up to that question. If yes, will it run Android background service? Uh, that's a good question. Probably beyond my uh, ability to answer. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure um, on that one. We'd have to ask one of our FAEs to answer that one. Okay, no worries. 
Uh, we, we do have a lot of questions and we will follow up in email with any question that doesn't get answered live and I'll track down the answer to that one as well. Awesome, thanks. Uh, another one, Jeff, how big is the total model size for both WakeWord and Command? So um, it depends on where you start. So, and, and what you, what you enter. So if I've got a couple of, you know, if I've got a single, single wake word and a single command set of say, you know, five or 10 commands, um, the wake word will have its own model size and the command set can have its own model size. And, it, and if it's a single wake word, whatever size I pick, it's going to be pretty close to that in voice up voice up can't hit an exact size. It, it's, a, it's a, it's an approximate. Now, when we hand tune, we can hand tune to whatever size is required. So if, if somebody says, I only have 78 K bytes of memory available, we can we can hit 78 K bytes. In voice hub, we're gonna say, well, 78, uh, yeah, with the 80 K byte, you might get there. It depends on the wake word that you type in. And with the new uh, with the new development that we're doing right now, we will be able to get smaller than that um, with, with voice hub as well. On commands, it's a little more tricky because you set the, you select the memory size that you wanna start with, so as an example, I want to start with a, uh, you know, a 147K byte model. And then as I'm, as I'm adding more commands, that's going to grow a little bit. It doesn't grow linearly, but it does grow. And so if I started with, again, like a 150K byte model and I typed in 10 commands, it's probably going to be in the 160 to 170K byte kind of range. And so as you build it and you hit that, hit the download, you'll actually see the size. So you can ensure that it fits within the memory allocation uh, from, from the chipset. Okay, thank you. And hey, this maybe one's Joe, to you. I can add for that. Joe, maybe oh, I can sure. add also from, from our side for that. So as I said, we have a family of chipsets. So in some chipset, you know, we can use a small models. It means also in many cases, small power consumption. So some tens of K kilobyte or few hundreds, but in our high end, it can go up to uh, even one meg, two meg, you know, so, so depend on the, on the situation. And there is a trade-off between the model size and the power consumption. So in places that the, power the device is not sensitive for power consumption and the accuracy is the most important, so we can have a big, bigger model. In cases that the power consumption is the critical, uh, then we may need to have a smaller, uh, a smaller model for that uh, devices. So we play with that, and accordingly, we define the chip, the model size, etc. Great. And Duty, uh, you had mentioned the use case of uh, always listening remote control. Somebody asked, uh, what is the expected battery life for remote control using DSPG solution? Okay, this is also it's a bit tricky to talk about the battery life because it depends on other components, like what is the battery type and battery size and uh, what is the other chip. Uh, in many cases, there is a DLE, R4C or other chip there. So I can talk uh, about our chip that is also built for the system that it will help, but specifically for our chip, you know, as I said before, we have 35 years of experience in low power. So all the architecture of the chipset is for low power. This is our mindset. And specifically in the DBM10, for example, that we showed today, there is a specific neural network that also cut the power for that. So this is when sensor is running on that. And now it depends how many commands and back to the previous question. But I can say, in, you know, in high level, let's say that it should take less than one milliwatt. So in some cases, much less, in some cases, more closer, many, many commands with bigger models, a little bit more. So it depends on the scenario. Uh, but let's say uh, below one uh, milliwatt. As I said before, uh, it, not, it does not mean that all the time the one milliwatt should work. We have a hibernation, <laughs> low power consumption that if we are using, as I said before, some hardware VAD or external component like this per microphone, we can be in this hibernation mode part of the time and then also the power consumption get down. So just to conclude, it depends on the product, specifically for remote control, we have the reference design. So we can say in this kind of reference design, it's around one year. In, in, when we take to assumption and uh, batteries that should be there, et cetera, et cetera. So let's say around one year. Okay, great. As we're coming up on the top of the hour, I'm going to try to squeeze in a few more questions. And I just want everybody to know this session has been recorded. You will receive a link and all questions that don't get answered live will be followed up via email. Uh, Jeff, what is the maximum number of commands that can be supported in the model? So for wake words, it's 10. 
and it's actually a number that we just kind of picked out of the air. I mean, we, we could support more than that, but from an accuracy and performance standpoint, wake words, we, we've got 10 is the max and for commands, it's 20. Again, we kind of picked that number out of the air. It could be more than that, um, but for, uh, again, performance and accuracy uh, reasons, we, we picked 20 for that. If we hand tune models, we've got more flexibility, obviously, because they're hand tuned down to the phoneme level. Okay, and this one might be for DSPG or sensory, so I'll let you both take a swing at it. How many dB higher should the command be over the background noise? So I'll, I'll okay, yeah, you want me to take the first pass at that one, Duty? <laughs> no, no, please, please. <laughs> um, if, if you've got zero, if, if you got a zero SNR, basically where the background noise and uh, you know what's coming into the, into the recognizer is the same, it, it's very challenging. Um, and that's obviously where the, the DSPG um, front end noise suppression can, can help improve that, obviously. Um, typically, I mean, more, the, the, the technologist answer will be more is better, um, but I've heard things like, you know, at least 6 dB above or 3 dB above, um, those kinds of things. And I have seen demonstrations and tests where it is around zero and, and we're still able to spot it. That's the, that's the beauty of, of our wake words and our, our phrase spotted technology. And what are your thoughts, Judy? Yeah, so it's back. It's similar to the question that was before. So it depends on the scenario. We have a solution for far field, for near field. So it depends on the exact uh, situation. If the, you know, what is the beam that need to be if the user is only in front or need 360. So there are many questions here. But in general, our algorithm can reduce dramatically the noise. And then the, the engine of the sensory will get a cleaner uh, device. I said, you know, we can pass ADS, so who want the, as a reference, but this is, uh, you know, we can pass it with, uh, this is easy, we can do much better. So we need to, to see the exact scenario and then we can uh, give the exact answer. So again, maybe the guy that asked that if he can contact us, would be very happy, very happy to, to answer. Yes, we'll make sure uh, everybody can access both Duty, Jeff, Rajdeep. Thank you for your time today. We're at the top of the hour. I'm going to wrap up this webinar. And uh, thank you to our panelists, as well as our participants. The recorded uh, webinar will be available uh, within a few days, and you will get contact information on how to reach out for additional information as well. Thank you to everybody, and uh, have a good day. Thanks, all. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.